In the words of that one SNL skit, Pat Sertan, I pray to you, man, because that huge pick six to seal the game for a Broncos 28-13 win was all Broncos fans needed to get completely drunk and high off the prospect and possibility of this team turning things around. They don't look like a 6-5 and five team, or maybe they do. Maybe it's exactly what you expect a slightly above 500 team to play like, but a 28-13 win for Denver has them all of a sudden out of the grave. I was one of the people that kind of, I wouldn't say wrote him off for the rest of the year, but I definitely wrote off Vic Fangio. I thought he was dead in the water, but he had his team ready to go and rallied to take off this hot Chargers team who is hot and cold, uh, kind of like the Broncos, honestly. They just make it look a little bit better when they're winning than Denver does. But regardless, Justin Herbert was, he's got brown stuff behind his derriere after this game. He was running around to save us. Couldn't even keep his head in straight. Uh, Keenan Allen, for the most part, seven receptions for 85 yards, but he never really had that huge boom play. But the Broncos team, led by Teddy Bridgewater, we're going to talk about him and Drew Locke, and a Javante Williams run game, and through the air, was ready to rock and roll. So before we get even deeper into this Week 12 recap, go ahead right now and like this video. Don't do it for me. Don't do it for yourself. Do it for Patrick Sertan, the guy we're praying to, who came up with two huge INTs in this win to keep the Broncos alive, but most importantly, to make next Sunday night very watchable. Because if the Broncos lost this game, they would go on Sunday Night Football and frankly probably embarrass a lot of the Broncos fan base. But they win this game, and now the division is up for grabs next Sunday. So like this video if you have not already. But this team, I, I don't know where to begin to understand this team because this is a team that got their ass kicked at home, and I'm not going to be too negative for too long, but let's face facts, against the Ravens, um, against the Raiders, and most recently the Eagles, all double-digit losses, and somehow they find a way to just blow out the Chargers and make the Chargers look like the Detroit Lions of this year. And a lot of it because of Pat Sertan came up with a huge red zone interception. Then you get the pick six off the tip ball from Austin Eckler and returns it for six. And now you're wondering, we have something brewing for years to come between Herbert and Sertan. I mean, the Broncos, of course, have no shortage of fantastic DBs who have been just in uh, Phillip Rivers' nightmares. Not so much Mahomes, but we'll hopefully get to that point one day. Derek Carr, for sure. And a long lineage of other AFC West quarterbacks. Hopefully, Sertan can be the next guy for Denver to be just the kryptonite, honestly, for Herbert. But the big story probably coming out of this game, out of this win, is Teddy Bridgewater. It's a little confusing to really diagnose what Teddy Two Gloves did today. 11 for 18, 129 yards and a touchdown. Nice toss to Eric Sauber in the back of the end zone. But he left in the first half with a shin injury. He looked kind of sh shaken up, but then this is what I didn't get, was that he was standing on the sideline 20 yards away from everyone else with his helmet on, but wasn't going into the game because Drew Locke was still playing, and Drew Locke, at this point, someone needs to tell him, you are playing to be a an expensive backup next season. If you continue to suck, and now it's the second opportunity you've had off the bench, you're not going to be a second backup. You're most likely going to be competing for a backup position. You don't want to be that guy going to camp as a medium-ish, not quite a veteran, but been in the league for a couple seasons now, and you're going to get ousted by another team's fifth-round pick, you know, kind of like a Jake Fromm or some Sam Ellinger middle-of-the-road, late-round quarterback. So going back to um, Teddy Bridgewater, though, let's get back there because I, I just – it was very bizarre that Drew Locke played for the rest of the first half, and then Teddy Two Gloves, who – as no doubtly a tough guy, but he really needed this too after kind of pussing out in that Darius Slay fumble recovery for six in the Eagles game. He guts it out. He's clearly playing through a ton of pain. He's limping around out there, but he ultimately keeps it together and doesn't blow this game. And that's really what you needed from Bridgewater in the second half. It's all there. The wind's out in front of you. Just don't blow it. You don't have to go get it. Just don't hand it away. So props to Bridgewater. Held it together. I just didn't really understand how all the events transpired in terms of he got his helmet on. He's not going to play for the rest of the first half, but he's good to go for the second half after not seeing any trainers for the bulk of this later, the second half of the, you know, down the stretch of the first half. It just was a little confusing, but... Altogether, played pretty well in the second half. At least did well enough, we'll say, uh, for an injured guy to keep it going. Broncos fans, if you have not already, go ahead and subscribe. Don't do it for me. 
Do it for yourself, but most importantly, do it for like those eight to nine Chargers fans across the country that had their one day they look forward to six times so far this season ruined. Because Chargers fans, I don't believe they're real. They are somewhere like a Loch Ness monster, where if you talk to enough people, someone will say they're out there. But I, they, 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 I don't know. They, they just remind me of ghosts and goblins. Who, if you just re, you know ask enough people, one or two will say, yeah, they're out there. But Chargers fans, you're not real. I refuse to believe it. I just, I just can't accept it. But the fun thing is going to be this upcoming Sunday. Now, a week from today, Sunday Night Football at Arrowhead against the Chiefs. And all of a sudden, this game is extremely meaningful. You want to know why? Because a lot is on the line. Here's the current AFC West standings. And the Broncos sit at 6-5, and five, but they're going to shoot up. And if they win and the Char Chiefs lose, 7-5 and five Broncos leapfrogs Kansas City. And they are now first in the division. Uh, barring maybe what the Chargers and the Raiders do, but there's some, you know, some numbers to crunch, but it's really close. This is a Mario Kart race where no one's got that little flying uh, blue shell at the end who can blow it all up because it's so close right now. Maybe someone's got a red shell, not even a green shell. So it is that close at the moment, and next Sunday night's going to be super exciting. Here's how the current AFC playoff picture looks, though, after this win, and the Titans are falling. Wow. That, that is the biggest takeaway. Actually, biggest takeaway, Patriots ascending. Look at them at second. But let's focus on the Broncos, okay? They're sitting there just outside right now with the others behind, Ra the Ra behind the Raiders and behind the Browns. Both teams they lost to. Both teams they do not have the tiebreaker over as of now. If they beat the Raiders and have a better division record than Las Vegas, they'll leapfrog, th leapfrog them. But they've got the same record as the Chargers at the number seven spot. So Denver very much in reach of the playoffs. It is all in front of them. We'll get to their schedule later on. But I want to ask this question to you guys first. Will the Broncos make the playoffs? Type Y for yes or N for no. I'll give you my answer in a moment. And if you get hit with the YouTube ad break, scroll on down, reply with your Y for yes or N for no. It's the pinned comment. For me, it's a little tough to say this early, but... Look at the upcoming five games here. They get Kansas City Chiefs on Sunday Night Football. Then they've got the Lions at home. So if you could just split those games, meaning if it's okay if you lose to the Chiefs uh, on the road, it's understandable. But beat the Lions, you have to win that one. Can't give Detroit their first win. Bengals are not going to be an easy out either. That's a good Bengals team. And then you got the Raiders and the Chargers. So it's not an easy sledding. But this Broncos team, if they play like the team they played, if they, the way they played today, I don't know why they can't go 3-2 and two in the stretch. And maybe that's enough with a Week 18 at home against Kansas City. If the Chiefs are, they're not going to be resting under their stars at that point. I don't know. The next six games coming up, Broncos probably need to do better than 3-3 three and three to get in the playoffs. I would think 4-2 and two is what it makes it. So you have to split the games against Kansas City, and then maybe you take a loss against the Bengals, Raiders, or Chargers. And I'm fine with that. And 4-2 and two maybe gets you the 7 or the 6 spot. A lot to unpack here, but you just don't know with this team right now, okay? That's what I mean here, is that this team is a bit of a Jekyll and Hyde, okay? If they play like the game they played today against the Chargers, there's no reason why they can't go 4-2 or even 5-1. and one. But if they play like the team they played against the Eagles at home, then they're not going to go 4-2. and two. They're probably looking at 2-4. and four. So a lot is out there, and honestly, a ton's at stake for head coach Vic Fangio. He knows his seat's a little warm. Cooled off today, because no one's going to make a hot board video after this huge win. But... If they don't make the playoffs this year after three seasons, I just don't see a way he sticks around. But Vic Fangio, we'll talk about him later on. But first, we got an awesome hoodie deal going on with you guys, okay? 50% off this hoodie right here. Awesome hoodie. Getting a little chilly there at Mile High. Saw a ton of Broncos fans. Why don't you rep this hoodie? Holiday season's right around this corner. Get in on this awesome deal right now. Go to chatsports.com slash Broncos hoodie. I'll have the link in the comments and the description of this video. It's all thanks to our friends over at Fanatics. So check out this deal. It will not last forever. Diagnosing Vic Fangio is a job no doctor wants in America, but someone's got to do it. So I'm going to get my PhD today and try and figure out what the hell is going on with Vic Fangio. Because it doesn't make sense that you can put up such a poor effort against the Eagles at home and then turn around and beat a Chargers team that's coming off a huge win at home against the Steelers on Sunday Night Football last time out. So here's the thing with Vic Fangio. I got some notes written down. I don't want to miss a thing here. Can who, Someone needs to step up okay, and do America a favor and take away his challenge flag. I don't care if you got to bury it at the field hide in a locker, lock it up, and throw the key away. But he is now one for five on challenges this season. And this one made no sense. 
I'm sorry, I don't want to be negative after a huge win, but why are you challenging a clear uh, non-fumble? Uh, Justin Herbert was A, sliding. So once you begin to slide, you're down as a quarterback. But if that wasn't good enough for you, his knee and shin was clearly down. So Vic Fangio and whoever his buddy is up in the uh, skybox needs to have the mic unplugged, hit the mute button before the game or something because the challenges are awful. But here's the funny part throughout all this. Even though I never really understood why Bridgewater sat for the remainder of the first half, it was okay to go in the second half, and you played Locke out there who just frankly sucked. Um, but he didn't have much. He had a very short leash. These players play tough for him. You had some relatively unknownish players. I mean, new guys are on the block. Weatherly, Ajim, Kenny Young flying around the field, making huge plays for this Broncos team. Bradley Chubb, we'll talk about later, had his return, had pretty much no impact on this game for the most part, didn't even make a tackle. But still, I mean, this Broncos team was rallying hard for their coach. So Vic Fangio, I think what we're seeing right now is you are an extremely competent and great coordinator you're just missing on a couple x's and o's on the head coaching side of things like managing your quarterbacks and i don't know how to use a challenge flag because you were great last year i think you went four and oh awful in your first season back in 2019 but this year has been shitty as well broncos fans how about you head down to the comments and answer this question for me what would you grade their week 12 performance this is a tough one to answer a, B, C, D, or F. There's no way you're giving them a D or F. Are you all the way in on the A category? Or is it a B plus and you'd like to see a little more improvement? I'll give them an A. I got no problem giving them an A after this game. You made Justin Herbert look like a bad rookie quarterback. And your offense limped their way to 21 points. Not too shabby of a day at the office for Denver off the bye. So I'm going to give them an A. Let me know what you give them down below. Bradley Chubb made his return, had not played since that uh, ankle injury he suffered or kind of re-aggravated back in week two in Jacksonville. I think he's just kind of warming up, still catching up to speed, but we got to see Chubb out there, and with no Von Miller for the rest of the season and potentially forever, I don't know why we're going down this rabbit hole. That's just sad. You want to see Chubb kind of take over. It hasn't really worked out that Bradley Chubb's been the face of this defense. I think uh, Justin Simmons and, of course, Sertan after this game is well more on a track to be the face of the defense than Bradley Chubb is at the moment. And now Javante Williams, speaking of the face of the team, uh, speaking of Chubbs here, Javante Williams is a nightmare in the second half, okay? Not just the second half of games. I'm talking about that. But he runs so hard. The second half of the season, when teams are a little banged up, they're a little tired, a little fatigued, you don't want to go up against a guy named J Javante Williams. Look what he did today. He was all over the place on the ground and in the air, 111 total yards, had a big reception go for over 40 yards, got a rushing touchdown as well. Javante Williams, uh, yeah, got a touchdown as well. Williams was just um, magnificent, I mean, simply put there. So he's going to be a nightmare in the second half of this season in terms of defenses when they're a little banged up after playing 10 weeks of football. And here comes Javante Williams, who refuses to go down on first contact, doesn't want to go out of bounds, wants to run you over. That's going to be a tough matchup for banged up defenses down the stretch. To wrap up the video, if the Broncos are back, type B in the comment section. No limit how many times you can do it, so spam it below. Type B if you got the Broncos all the way back on this season.